Hello, my name is Tsu and I'm here making a screencast on how to use dbflow. dbflow is a blazing fast, powerful and very simple ORM Android database library. Okay, this was asked on one of the issues of dbflow and I said that I could make a video. Even though I'm Brazilian, English is not my native language, I'm not really good at English, but I hope you like it and you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm hoping for. Okay, first thing, let's create a new Android Studio project called dbflow screencast. Okay, this is company name, dry jelly bean, link activity and finish. Okay. I'll be using the latest version of dbflow, it's called 1.7.0 and I'm using the tutorial that's on the github so everything that I'm that I will show here will be on github I'll just say one or other thing that's not here okay so Android Studio I'm using Android Studio 1.1 it's the latest one here the project was created okay and I can close this and close this this is the views for Android Studio, it has an Android view, but I prefer to use the project view. It's just a matter of taste, I don't know. So here we have the build Gradle. Here we have configuration for the build script, the Gradle build script, when it's building our project. And here we have configurations for all projects. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is put in Gradle the highest labs Maven repository, the default is only J Center, and use these two libraries to our build script. This one is from Rise Labs, you can read what this does on its GitHub page, and Android APT, that is a annotation processing for Android, and it's what the, all the cool kids are using now and the Maven repository for our project too. So here we are. Now that this Gradle is set up, we can go to the Gradle of our module, our app. Okay, first thing, these two plugins that we will be using. The order here is important. So first it will use the Android application plugin then Android APT plugin, then real. Okay, order is important, remember that. And our dependencies go down here. And this is for APT, that is the annotation processing. And this is for our project, we'll be using dbflow and dbflow core. So this I'll sync now and Gradle will start downloading dependencies and this kind of thing. Okay, okay. now we have our, our dependencies set up, so we can close this and this, and this is our source, main, java, we have our blah 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 here. So, what do we need to do now? First things we need to do is create an application, example application. Why you need to do, uh, let's see, dbflow application, why? because uh, we need to initiate flow manager that's one of the things that dbflow uses so we can carry and save and all this kind of thing on our application so we need da -da -da -da, and create we need to initiate flow manager init this uh, there's another thing that the tutorial says that is to use on terminate but if you read the documentation this is never used on production only on emulated process environments or only on the emulation so nev nothing that you put on the on terminate will be called so you don't need really to put this flow manager destroy Okay, so we open our Android manifest 
and our application name will be dbflow application yes android studio you are so smart how can you know everything ahead of what i'm thinking i don't know i don't know okay uh, application created so now we need to create our database so we are creating a new class club app database you can put on 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 another uh, package or anything and just put it everything on the on the hood because yeah you know this is a simple screencast so what we need here is this annotation ba -ba -ba -ba. Out center yes foreign key supported if you want to we don't want now this and okay version and app data name app database and version we start with one like how humans start with one only programmers we start with zero okay so now we have a database yay nice so what we do with database nothing we need a model so we are creating our table our test model it needs to extend base model from dbflow structure and it will have the annotation table with database name call it uh, i don't remember the name so i need to see here what's the you know, database so one thing we can do to do best for ourselves on on developing apps it's public static final string db name equals app database Whoa. okay so why do this because then we can do app database dot db name here and we can do app database dot db name here so we just have to set the db name in one place we don't need to go every time there to see oh it's called app database or app db or blah so we just set it one time and use it everywhere it's a nice thing to do that's why the uh, tutorial does it so yeah you know this okay so what we need we need an id because every ta every table needs a primary key so this is a column and the type is column dot primary key auto increment so every time we create a new model it will auto increment the id yes it's nice string name and then we this will be a column and another column well, column id uh, random number okay every time we create it we can set a random number so this is the most uh, basic configuration you need a db uh, an application that extends android application because you need to uh, initiate flow manager and you we want to do this when the application starts not on the first activity or you can do where you want to so but this is better flow manager in it on the application and you need to use the application on the android manifest okay then you need an app database with the database annotation with its name and version and you need a model so you can use a model you can save things on the database yes that's why we are doing this thing okay so we can now compile projects and hope that everything will go okay it yeah it compiled yes so how do you know this is working without creating the app so what we can do is go here in build generated source do you remember the apt plugin we are using yes it creates code on compile time so you can go here on debug if you are creating a release version it will be on the release release folder and you can see that we have an 
App database database. Yes, that's that's it. So what the, we have here, uh, the models, the table names, the adapters, and the database name, the database version, and here on your package, the same package that you, you are using for your test models, we have our test model adapter, yes! This is where the, the flow manager will, will see the insert how, how it inserts, how it queries, how it will create database and we have our test model table, yes! So this is our table name, this is the column for ID, this is the column for name, this is column for random number. So when we, we need to use, like, uh, I need to insert a test model, so we create a new test model like that and blah test model equals a new test model and we can set it test model dot name equals to hehe no equals to suharesu and the test model dot random number equals to ten because yeah you know nine Nine is a better number. And then test model dot save. And async true, yes. So when we are doing this, we are creating our model and saving and flow manager or dbflow is doing everything in background for us. So yay for dbflow. And this test model adapter and table, you can just use it. Test model table dot the table name or the name column and we'll see that it is name and the table name whoops table name is test model yes so okay okay so this is my first screencast showing how to install how to use dbflow this is a very simple screencast i can do others if you want to but this is the most uh, simple configuration that you can do to use. So yes, it's that simple to use dbflow. At least these kind of things are this simple. So I hope you enjoyed this, this, this screencast and yes, that's it. And thanks for watching. See you later, alligator.